Hey everyone, my name is Jared from Buck and Bull Model Trains and welcome to the first episode of DCC Fridays. And if you'd like to know a little bit more about what I'm hoping to achieve in um, these weekly videos and stick around to the end, I'm going to chat a little bit about um, what I'm hoping to achieve. And this week I'd like to talk about um, keep alive capacitors, these little guys. Uh, something that's becoming quite popular in DCC electronics, um, in HO definitely, N-scale a little bit. Um, I am specialising mostly in N-scale, but I'm going to try and talk to sort of the whole um, thing. I'm an Australian N-scale modeler, um, and I've found that uh, Keep Alive is a real must, particularly for sound locomotives, um, to ensure really good running, um, and that sound is sounding really good. Um, so I've got two examples here. This is a aluminium electrolytic capacitor, which um, you might, when I say capacitor, or you know, when somebody says capacitor, this is probably what pops into your mind, this kind of looking thing. Um, and I've also got some cust this custom little setup here with three tantalum capacitors um, and a little diode. Um, and this is sort of, uh, these are, I've got these in stock on my website. And these are the kind of things that I've been using in my um, N-scale locomotives and they're working really, really well. Um, so why why bother with Keep Alive? Like what's Keep Alive all about? Um, you might already know or you might be wondering. So um, the, whole, the whole purpose of Keep Alive is to keep your locomotive running uh, when it hits some um, dead, uh, it could be a dead frog, um, any random dead spots in your track. Hopefully you don't have any, but hey, you might have a little dead spot somewhere um, or dirty track, of course, um, anything else that you can think of that causes your locomotive to stall and lose power. Um, so the job of these little guys is to be a little bit of reserve power that uh, sits in the circuit. They're, they're attached to your decoder, one side is, uh, goes to your common positive, your blue wire on the decoder, and the other side goes to the ground pad on your decoder. And they're designed to, as your locomotive is running and receiving power, or maybe it's stationary and is um, powered up and the layout is powered up, uh, these sit in the circuit and um, have up to, for these particular ones, up to 16 volts, whatever your layout voltage is. Mine's about 13 and a half, 13.8 or so. That'll be just stored in the in these capacitors as capacitors do that energy will be stored in there um, depending on the capacitance of your capacitors and then when your locomotive completely loses power all the wheels are touching the rails but somehow it manages to drop power for a very very short period of time or maybe it, you know if it didn't have keep alive it would just stop dead um, completely this will kick in the power is released to the decoder the decoder can keep the motor spinning and the locomotive will hopefully clear that little spot of dead track and no worries. You don't even, so that all those problems with locomotives stalling and getting really frustrated when you're just trying to run a train and have some fun. Um, these little guys are designed to, these little guys are designed to solve that problem and cure that frustration. Um, now the problem is they might be, these might cause a lot of frustration to install, um, to put in there. For those who might not know a whole lot about electronics, um, I'll make confession. I'm even though I do all of this stuff, I'm not great with electronics. I've done a lot of research though and figured some stuff out. So I hope that I can help um, you guys with some info on this. Um, and yeah, it, it, provided you're okay, you're ha fairly handy with soldering iron, it can be done. Um, otherwise, I'm more than happy to help you out um, with getting these these guys set up. Um, so a quick, uh, something interesting about these tantalum capacitors, particularly that is, um, that is good about these, thinking about small capacitors, very small ones, N scale, um, you might've uh, heard of people using ceramic capacitors potentially. Um, and now that ceramic capacitors are great, you know, all capacitors pretty much work exactly the same. Um, they discharge power. The problem with ceramic capacitors is that when they get close to their peak operating voltage, so they might be rated at say 16 volts or 25 volts, um, when they get close to that peak voltage, they uh, the capacitance, the amount of energy they can store in them, uh, it goes down, it actually decreases as, 
as the voltage increases close to its limit. So if you're if you've got 16 volt capacitors, uh, ceramic capacitors, and you're running your layout at 13, 14 volts, you potentially, quite potentially, will see uh, you won't you won't see the full capacitance um, and capability of those ceramic um, capacitors at work. Whereas tantalum capacitors like these, they will operate at their full capacitance right up to their top operating voltage, to their rated voltage, which is really handy. Now, another really cool thing about these tantalum capacitors is that, um, uh, and the same goes for the aluminium electrolytic ones, our classic kind of barrel shaped capacitors, you can have um, multiple of them throughout, scattered throughout your locomotive. Now with the larger, um, uh, our larger kind of cylindrical capacitors, um, you might really only be able to fit them in one spot. You might be able to separate them. These guys can fit like in lots and lots of different spots. As far as it, it's basically as it, for the amount of bother and effort you want to put in, you can put as pretty much as many of these into a locomotive as you want. Um, I've fitted nine of these to a um, Gopher Models B class in N scale, and it runs for probably about. 0.5 of a second after I pick it up off the track, it will keep running and it's a sound unit. So um, non-sound, it could maybe run up to one second, potentially, if you're lucky, <laughs> um, which is pretty good. If you've got a dead spot on your layout where your locomotive, if it's powered through by a keep alive, can't get through it in about half a second or a second, then you've probably got a pretty serious dead spot that you need to have a look at. Um, so yeah, these are really handy for that. You can have, um, you know, say three of them at the front of the locomotive, a further three down the back. It's just, they just have to be wired up, which is basically all just connected in parallel like these are. Um, and the advantage, you might have seen um, some capacitors connected in series to kind of add up the voltage of each capacitor, um, which is coming in a little bit more. Um, and there's something I'm starting to explore, but the advantage with wiring them up in parallel is that you're not going to get voltage drop if, say, for whatever reason, one of these capacitors fails and just, you know, it, it breaks off the little bit of solder and it's not picking up power or something for whatever reason. Um, it will still operate up to 16 volts. Um, the diode, which is rated, um, this one's rated for 16 volts, but I'm getting in 15 volt ones to be extra on the safe side. Um, if, if it, you know, for whatever reason that your voltage of the capacitor unit is going to always be 16 volts and you're not going to have a problem there at all. Um, if say one of the capacitors fails in a couple of years or something, um, I haven't had that. Um, I think I wouldn't be able to tell really. Um, uh, the great thing about using little capacitors like this is that if you've got a sound locomotive and particularly an end scale where picking up power is at slow speeds and, and whatnot is a little bit um, tougher and doesn't always happen as perfectly as we want it to. This little guy will help eliminate any of those uh, where your loco, those, those moments where your loco might be running, it might start a slightly, but keeps going. You know, you might see the lights flicker, but particularly you might not even be looking at the locomotive, but you'll hear that the sound will drop out, um, maybe start back up some sort of a thing, it might pop, um, when the amplifier powers up depends on the brand of decoder um, you're using, but that can be quite distracting. Um, and if you hit a little patch of dirty track, it might, you know, the, if the decoder loses power for such a small increment of a second, it can be really disruptive even. Um, little setup of capacitors like this, just three here, will solve that straight away. Um, these capacitors here fitted to, say, a Gopher Models locomotive, um, a B class, a 44 class, something like that. We'll give it maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a second of runtime um, without power to the decoder, something like that. And that might seem like really insignificant. You might go, well, that's that's rubbish. Um, why would I bother? Um, trust me, you will notice a massive difference, um, even with just this little thing, which you can just slip straight in and it's done. Um, these provide a huge difference. Um, to your running, particularly on a sound loco. Um, if I showed you some of my sound locos that I've got only some, some of them have got only these three fitted. Um, another one, as I said earlier, I've got nine fitted too. If I remove the capacitors altogether, all like you'd pretty much just forget it. It would, you wouldn't want to run it. It just sounds terrible. Um, so yeah, these are a must in, in that case. Um, if your locomotive picks up power really well and you're not fussed, 
no worries, that's fine. You know, if you've got the problem, then that's what these are for. So yeah, that's capacitors. So you might be wondering, um, like why I'm kind of doing all of this. I've, um, with COVID and everything, I've kind of really missed going to exhibitions and chatting to everyone there about different things I've discovered and showing them sort of the latest innovations in N-Scale and what we're doing with DCC, particularly here in Australia. Um, and I've done, uh, it's, you know, it's my, it's a business for me and it's also my hobby. I've done a lot of research um, into this stuff and I'm really quite passionate about it. And I thought it'd be great to sort of share that. Um, I am also plugging my business, of course, um, through this method. And, um, but most of all, uh, my whole kind of business motto is not just to sort of, you know, buy a product and sell it and make some money and happy days. I, I really, um, I really research every product I buy, every product I stock, I, um, use, or it's like a subsidiary of something that I use that is really good. And I, um, think it's the best, um, that I can get for whatever, whatever reason. Um, the stuff I, I stock is particularly really, really small stuff. So I'm really interested in fitting stuff, uh, into really small applications in N scale, um, particularly Australian N scale, which is, um, smaller than N gauge, British N gauge. And it is also, um, generally smaller than American N scale. American locomotives have a larger loading scale. I believe that's what the correct term is where they, they're physically higher and wider. Their, their tunnels are larger. They can run bigger, literally bigger trains on their standard gauge track. So as a result, American and scale locomotives are generally quite large, um, as opposed to say a 48 class locomotive in N scale, which is basically tiny. Um, I'm also, I've got a number of customers and I, I myself am, am interested in Z scale. Um, and I, I sell some decoders that are appropriate for that. Um, that even those decoders are actually designed for, technically designed for T-gauge, which is that tiny, tiny, tiny. So, so I'm interested in really small stuff um, and spe that, that sort of specialist application. Um, and so, uh, and I'm going to upload this onto YouTube as well. Um, I'm not looking to, you know, monetize this and put all ads on it and everything. I'm already advertising my own stuff. So I see that is um, perfectly good reason to put it there and not, um, charge any, you know, try and earn any money out of that. Um, I'll, I've definitely been inspired by, um, people on YouTube who, um, are making a lot of these, um, model railway videos, um, and guides and stuff with DCC as well. Um, and they've got ads on their videos. Um, that's great for them. They're putting a lot of time and energy into making those videos. And they're also buying a lot of products to show us. Um, and they need a lot of tools and equipment to make their videos really good. Um, I'm keeping this really kind of simple and, um, forgive me if you think, you know, the lighting's not great or the sound's not great. Um, this is all about just getting, um, some info out there and getting a bit of exposure on what like I'm doing and, um, trying to promote that a little bit, I guess, if that's okay. Um, and above all sharing this great hobby, um, as the, um, some of the guys over in the States say, um, model rail, model railroading is the greatest hobby, um, on the earth, um, in this world. Um, and I definitely believe that, um, I think it's a great hobby. I mean, sure there's lots of great other hobbies out there, but Hey, I, I like this. So I'll definitely back that slogan. Um, so I, yeah, really hope you, um, enjoy these. I'm aiming to keep these, um, videos in future really quite short and compact. Um, so you, you know, you don't have to sit down and get out some popcorn as you watch it and, um, yeah, really get into it. So, yeah, one thing I did really want to say, um, is that I'm, uh, as a modeler, I am, I really do enjoy electronics and fiddling and building kits and all that sort of stuff and uh, tinkering and fiddling. Um, but I'm also a really, really big fan of running my trains, um, and running them kind of, uh, I guess prototypical, like actually running them and driving them, um, and having fun with that. And that's something I'm really kind of passionate about. And, um, yeah, I really want to see kind of grow in the hobby, more people running their trains and having fun with them. Um, you know, whether that be doing operations, um, shunting things, running mainline trains, branch line, all that sort of stuff. Um, people actually getting out there, running their trains, enjoying themselves, um, going to clubs, 
going to each other's houses and layouts and, and enjoying um, that really great community time. Um, that's something I'm really, really passionate about and um, and part of the, all the reason why um, it, uh, part of the reason why I'm stocking things like keep alive capacitors so that your locos will run better um, and stocking small decoders so that you can fit DCC decoders into those locos that you really like that you could never run um, so that you can now run them and enjoy them and not have to run them just on your little DC layout that's kind of, I don't know, you know, not not so good or something like that. You might have a big DC layout and um, and you enjoy running on that and that's that's totally fine. But for those who move to DCC, it can be a real kind of downer. Um, and part of the reason as well why I'm really pushing for sound and um, and built, starting to build some Australian N-scale sound projects so that um, people can really, uh, you know, not they, they might um, be a little bit... Uh, possibly sick of just putting the locomotive on the track and seeing it run without any sound or something like that. Um, they can really get that extra level of realism and, and have some fun with that, blow the horn, you know, um, blow the whistle, all that kind of stuff, which is really fun um, when operating trains and running them. So um, I'm going to wrap this up here. Thank you for watching if you came this far and I will see you next week, hopefully. Cheers. Bye.